Hey everyone, welcome back to our Flexbox series. Whereas in the last series we focused on the Flexbox container itself, in this video we'll have a look at the children which live inside such a Flex container and the properties we can provide to them. Let's get started. One thing I already showed you in the last video, but I'm going to repeat it nonetheless, is the flag shrink property. Now, if we give our boxes, and please note that the box class is the class um, our children inside the container have. Now, if we give our boxes the property of flex shrink and provide a value other than zero, for example, one, then every box will be allowed to shrink to fit inside this container. So at the moment, as you can see, this is no issue, as they're not taking enough space at the moment anyway. But what if we decrease the size of our container to, let's say, 400 pixels? 400 pixels. Now everything will still be fitted inside this container, even though, as you can see here, above in this example, the, the normal width of all boxes would be broader than the container dimension is. So if we set flex shrink to zero, watch what happens. Now our boxes will have the same width as they do in the above example, and therefore they will overlap the container, right? So they are no longer fitted inside. And this is what flex shrink does. Now I just reset everything and we're looking at the next example. Flex grow. So again our box class, let's provide a flex grow of 1. And as you can see what now happens is that even though we have specific width provided for each box, these classes here define the width of our boxes, they will still stretch out and expand over the full width of our container. And this is because we gave every box a property of flex grow. Now, as with flex shrink, we don't have to do this for every box. We can also pick some specific box. So let's say I only want box one to flex grow. Back box one has a class of box one in this example. And if I do this, now you see every column, every box keeps its width I provided with this classes here, except for box one, which would have as you could see, a class of W small, which is 100 pixels, but it stretches out to the size of W big, which is three times the size. Now we can get this even further. If we go to box two, which is the broadest box, and give it a flex grow of two. Now you can see flex one is double the size, roughly, of its, its normal size. We, we can have a look at it. It's 1.66 times the normal size. And flex 2 has also been increased. Now what happened here is that box 1 and box 2 got bigger, but box 2 takes more space of the to be filled with space. And this is because we gave it a flex grow of two, whereas this only has a flex grow of one. And what this means, it means is divide up, basically what, what flex grow does is divide up all to be filled with space, the white space here, between all boxes which have the flex grow property with a positive integer. And then it looks at the relation of these values we provide here and we and what this number say is that box 2 should take twice as much of this remaining space as box 1 does and if we were this set were to set this to 8 then you can see box 1 is bigger than in the above example but only by a tiny bit because we told box 2 to take up if you put it this way, eight times as much space of this space here than box one does. So that's flex grow. The next property is 
the order property. Now if I take my second box here and give it an order of 2, it is pushed all the way to the end of our four boxes. Now you might think, why is this the case? I gave it an order of 2 and not 4. Well, Flexbox does know how many boxes live inside its Flex container. So order works a little bit different. The number we specify here is not the position of your occurrence in, inside this box, but it is a, a, a relative measure compared to the other boxes. And by default, this number is zero. So you could say all boxes have zero, but the box two has a value of two. And that means, zero means leave them the way they appear in the HTML document in the DOM, and only the, the, the one with the higher number will be pushed to the end. So if we had box one with a value of order three, you can see that now one is in the end because it is the highest value. Two is the second last element because it has the second highest value. And these two stayed away. They, they are in this example here because they don't have any order provided. They have an order of zero. Now we can also provide a negative value here of minus one, for example. Now two is the first element because minus one is smaller than zero, which these elements here have. And this is why it is pushed to the beginning. Now if we give this a value of minus three, we have the same order as here, even though we don't use the standard values of zero. So you basically have to think of the order function as how would the numbers you provide here be ordered? And there you would see, okay, minus three is the smallest, it's the first one, then comes minus one, the second one, and these two have zero. And if elements have the same integer value here, they will just be ordered by the appearance in the HTML structure. So next we're going to look at the flex basis property. And this one is a little bit difficult because not all of its supported values are actually supported by browsers at the moment. But nonetheless, we're gonna have a look at it. So what flex basis does is it sets the dimensions of an element. Now you would say, well, I'm doing this with width and height, right? Um, yeah, you basically do, and this is why the default value of flex basis is auto, which says, look at my width and height. Now we can also provide a different value here. We could provide a measurement value like 100 pixels. And now look what happens. Now all elements are 100 pixels wide. Well, I just said you can set width and height here, right? Mm, not exactly. You're setting only the dimension which is which corresponds to the direction of your container. So as we got a container a flex direction of row, which means from left to right, we're setting the width here. If you were to change this to column, we're setting the height. Got this? So you can say Flex base is 100 pixels. We could also say 10%. We can basically use all units we can use in uh, our width and height properties. So we theoretically also got the content value, which would mean take as much space as the content needs. And as you can see, I can't really use it at the moment, and this is what I meant. It's not fully supported as of yet, but what does work is setting uh, a value at width in pixels or a dimension in pixels and other units like M's, REM's, percentages, as well as auto, which is the default. Now we learned about flex grow, shrink, and flex basis and we can sum them up with the flex property which first looks at the grow property which means we can set it to one to allow it to grow as you can see it already grew then we can set it to zero to allow it to shrink and we can set it to auto 
to look at its own provided dimensions or for example 100 pixels but this obviously doesn't work because we allow it to grow this would only work if we set this to zero right okay that's the flex property now the last property we have is the align self property and for this to work I'm just going to remove this and add the align items property to our container. You already know this one from the last video. And I'm going to set it to flex start. Now all items are aligned to the top and no longer stretch out. Now I can set box free, for example, to align self flex end. And now only box free will be aligned to the end while the other ones are still aligned to the top of the box of the container. So basically an align self allows you to override the setting of align items for individual children. And that's uh, basically all about children properties in a Flexbox environment. Um, you learn about flex grow, shrink, basis, the combined flex property and now align self. And with these properties, as well as the other stuff we learned about the flex container itself, you should really be able to make cool looking flexible layouts. And we're actually going to do this in one of my upcoming series. And I'm really looking forward to that. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave some feedback and I will see you in the next video. Bye.